This channel is for educational purposes only. Please do your own due diligence before making any investment decisions. Hey, this is Joe uh, giving you an update on the stock market coming to you from Denver. Maybe you can see the uh, foothills in the background, uh, but we're going to get going on this update here. Uh, let's see what the market's doing. It doesn't seem to want to give it up. Uh, let's get into some of these details, though. If you're interested in learning more about uh, some of these techniques, I would suggest starting with the book I'm offering at a discount right now. Uh, you can go to rabelstockresearch.com forward slash book for more information. Okay, let's start out with the market conditions. Uh, sentiment didn't change very much. Went from 46% to 45%, just a small change in the uh, number of bulls. Uh, so generally speaking, I'm still ca characterizing this as a negative um, and as well as the overbought oversold, which is up at 88%. We can see it keeps lingering and it has pretty much this entire year in that overbought territory. But neither one of these, as I mentioned last week, are not really considered timing tools. All right. But uh, we need to be aware of the fact that the market's made a big run here and that people are getting bullish. Um, the uh, so a few changes with the volatility. The, the weekly actually turned back down. It was neutral last week. Um, it's still in a pretty strong condition. The volatility is pretty low. I'll go into that in a second. But the daily um, has turned down uh, as well. That was negative last week, and that's actually improved as well. And then all the trends and the momentum are still positive. I'll go through that. I am going to go through a few other indices as well. Um, okay, let's look at these uh, volatility measures. So you can see what's going on here. Um, we got a pretty good drop in the uh, in the average true range on the daily chart. It cr crossed down through its moving average, which is an 18 MA of the 20 period RS, uh, ATR, right? And that's sort of flattening out. So this could quickly turn back to bullish here, potentially. Um, now, if you notice what's happened recently, over the last five to 10 days, the volatility has shrunk again. Um, we were getting a lot of uh, gapping taking place, a lot of movement, bigger bars, and now it's starting to quiet down again. Now, that could be just the calm before the storm. Uh, so I'm not saying that it's an all clear, just based on the fact that this has been above a rising 18 day for such a long time. It's, it's getting this is the longevity of this trend is getting late. I think we have to be on the lookout for a, a reversal um, of some sort is my guess. All right. So um, but I will say that the volatility has dropped here. And uh, if we look at what's going on on the weekly, it uh, it looks like it's bouncing off the declining 18 and uh, starting to drop again. So not what I would consider to be a huge volatility or high risk level on the weekly chart. The daily is still showing some volatility because this is a rising moving average. Once that turns down, then the, the risk is um, a little bit less, I guess. But I got to tell you, I mean, just based on what we've been talking about, I think what we want to key on is a break of this 18 and for that to roll over. All right, let's go ahead and get into the... Um, four time frames and I'm going to go through, um, like I said, I'm going to go through a few other indices. So the key thing I think we need to be aware of is the fact that the um, momentum on the weekly is still very strong, right? I mean, this is a, this is a pretty bullish move. Uh, it's, it's reached 50 now on the ADX on this time frame, And yeah, the green DI still isn't confirming this, this last push, but look at how weak we've got the sellers. We're still keying on the sellers and waiting for some strength in the sell side. Now, as I mentioned on the Tuesday, we are finally seeing a little bit of a drop in this ADX. It's below 25 for the first time in a while. So it is a divergent peak below 25. It is worth noting, but we still need a seller to show up. We need some strength in the sellers to break out above all these highs that have been made over the last few months. Once that happens, I think we'll break the uh, the 18 day. Um and so that's that's the key. Break the 18 day, see if it rolls over. Let's not get too consumed with looking for anything on this time frame because we need it to uh, on the uh, indicators because we need it to trigger on the uh, price on a price basis. Now, if we look at the Qs, it's actually a little bit weaker. Look at how weak the ADX is. It's down to 11. So it's a divergent peak failed at 25 and it keeps dropping even though price is lingering near the highs. So it's the same concept as the S&P and I think this actually looks a little weaker. The problem is is that we don't have any confirmation. Now one thing we look at in this uh, on this chart is um, 
if we drew in our trend line, we basically violated the trend line, right? And now we're bouncing up and forming the two. Even though it went to a marginal new high, it's a two. So now we're looking for a move that would cause this low to be taken out. All right. Now, I guess you could look at it as if we saw some weakness here, like a big, strong red bar coming to the downside, then we would have completed the two. And uh, with based on what's taking place here, that would probably be, you know, pretty decent information that this is starting to turn down. But just based on the fact that this thing just refuses to go down, we probably do want to wait for this low to be taken out on this uh, chart. All right. Let's look at the, uh, the diamonds. So um, I think this is the best looking um, uh, indice, essentially. Strong move, great momentum. It's short term overbought, could use a pullback. But on a pullback, I would be a buyer of this. I think this looks, uh, this is already broken out. Whereas the IWM is trying to break out and confirm. Um, this is, I think, showing a decent amount of strength. And there's some areas inside of the Dow. Uh, the industrials have been very strong. Financials are showing a lot of strength. And basic materials are a recent newcomer uh, showing improvement. And even energy this last few weeks uh, showing a lot of improvement as well. Um, IWM, look at this way. This is cupping around and improving. And we've had a couple pretty good days. Again, on a relative basis, I think this is trading a little bit better, not as good as we really need it if we're going to expect a, a dynamic move to the upside. But this is a the bias is to the upside now. We've got a rising 18 month that we're above, a rising 18 week, rising 18 day. Hard to argue with that. Um, let's just take a quick peek at the gold, which is breaking out of this huge base. I mean, look at the size of this huge. Uh, this is a three to four year base that we're breaking out of. And this is the end of the month. Look at this big green bar breakout on, a, on the gold chart. I mean, that is... Uh, and we did the same thing on the weekly with a nice follow through on this big red, uh, big green bar here, which is the breakout bar. So we've got two major time frames showing us some pretty nice price action. I like think that looks pretty good. And then uh, I'd like to look at this uh, uh, crude oil because in energy is showing improvement. And I think crossing a back above the 79 it was about 78, 79 was the key level. Getting back above that, I think, is really bullish. Uh, we're back above the 18 month here. We're showing sort of a double bottom um, reverse divergence right at the zero line with low ADX on the monthly chart. And uh, we're back above the key moving averages. Now the 18 is rising on the weekly. So a lot of good things taking place in some of these areas, these commodity based areas like gold and oil. That's the update for the week. Let me know if you have any questions.